Hey guys, Ethan from Microchip Technology. Today, we'll discuss what a differential analog to digital converter or differential ADC is, as well as go through its different operating modes on the PIC16 F171's family of microcontrollers. Then, we'll look at a pressure sensor demo that will demonstrate various features on the differential ADC found on the PIC16 F171's family of MCUs. Microcontrollers can only understand digital signals, so when you use analog signals, which are signals with values other than 1 or 0, the microcontroller cannot understand them. The ADC converts continuous analog input signals into discrete binary representations. An ADC enables a digital circuit to react to real-world events such as user input devices or sensors that are not digital signals. At a basic level, an ADC will sample the analog signal and derive a digital value. Microcontrollers can approximate analog signals after doing this several times very quickly. In a single-ended ADC, the signal voltage is measured with respect to ground and a voltage reference. Here's an example. For a 12-bit ADC with a voltage reference of 3 volts, there are 4096 or 2 to the power of 12 distinct values spread over the 3 volts. Dividing 3 by 4096 shows each bit has approximately 0.73 millivolts of precision. In general, if the desired signal stays within a small voltage range, a single-ended ADC's wide measurement range is wasted because you no longer have the appropriate range due to the output signal being constrained to specific values. Therefore, the ADC will have lower effective resolution. Something also worth mentioning is when producing an ADC reading, this can occasionally introduce unwanted signal noise due to the range of the single-ended ADC. To resolve this issue, a conditioning circuit would be needed in addition to the ADC to clean up the signal, which would add cost to the bomb. In order to minimize wasted resolution, it is often helpful to keep the signal path between the sensor and microcontroller as short as possible to provide an optimal reading. Single-ended ADCs are ideal to use if the signal source and the ADC's resolution are close enough to one another. Due to their low cost, ease of use, and wide range of MCUs that include single-ended ADCs, these ADCs are suitable for a variety of sensor applications. An alternative to a single-ended ADC is a differential ADC, which overcomes the drawbacks of single-ended ADCs. Differential ADCs measure the voltage difference between two user-defined inputs, allowing users to focus on the voltage range they are interested in without racing resolution. Rather than having the signal voltage measured with respect to ground, you can choose a range in which you are interested in, which will resolve the issue of wasting resolution. To achieve this, the negative input should be set to the midpoint of the expected input voltage range. For example, if we have an analog signal that fluctuates between 3 volts and 2 volts, you will set your midpoint voltage to 2.5 volts, and this will allow you to focus on the desired range you want to have the most optimum resolution coming from the ADC. This can be essential in certain applications, as some measurement concepts require two output signals instead of one to quantify the physical property of interest, such as a sensor. A differential ADC is also useful in the case where you have applications that require long signal pass between the sensor and microcontroller, as a differential ADC provides higher performance by reducing noise from the signal path due to longer routes from the sensor to the MCU or more prone to picking up excess noise. If you want to go into more detail about the differential ADC, you can find more information about the differential ADC in the white paper listed in the description below. Along with the differential portion of the ADC, our ADC provides many different operating modes. Some of these include burst mode, where the ADC will take numerous measurements of a pin before triggering a user-defined event, such as letting the CPU know that the conversion is completed. Window comparisons, where the ADC is used to decide when certain thresholds have been met. This is useful in the case where you have a defined window of operation and you want the CPU to be notified when you are outside of that range. These are some of the modes that our ADC offers. Now that we've gone over the differential ADC and its modes, let us look at a pressure sensor demo that displays the capabilities of the differential ADC on a PIC-16 F17146. This demonstration uses the PIC-16 F17146 on a Curiosity Nano development board with a protoclick from Microelectronica to interface with the pressure sensor. Shown on the screen is a high-level block diagram of how to interface a 2SMPP pressure sensor with a differential output voltage using a differential ADC and an op-amp found on the PIC-16 F17146 MCU. First, let's discuss the protoclick on the Curiosity Nano Base. The protoclick is populated with three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, which are boxed in red on the screen. Let's discuss their purpose and why they are necessary. 
The resistor R3 is a 2K ohm shunt resistor, which measures the circuit's current. There's an internal 20K bridge resistance inside the pressure sensor, which means the total resistance, which is the shunt resistor, plus the internal bridge resistance inside of the pressure sensor, which equates to 22K. Now that we've covered the purpose of R3, let's examine R1 and R2. According to the datasheet specs of the pressure sensor, it has an overall differential voltage output range of negative 2.4 to 31 millivolts. To be read appropriately by the MCU, the signal must be amplified by the PIC16 F17146, which operates at 3.3 volts. Op-amps have internal resistor ladders for dynamic gain adjustment, but because we need such a large gain, we'll use external resistors and the op-amp will be used as a buffer. To achieve a gain of 55, resistors with size of 820K and 15K are used. A constant excitation current of 100 microamps is required for the pressure sensor, which is labeled ICC in the block diagram. The digital to analog converter can be used as a source for the excitation current. Based on the total resistance of the circuit and the current required, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the amount of voltage needed to achieve a 100 microamp current, concluding that the DAC is set to have a reference voltage of 3.3 volts. The pressure sensor has a maximum extreme pressure voltage at 37 millivolts, multiplied by our op-amp gain of 55, which means we have an extreme maximum output of 2.035 volts coming out of the op-amp. The typical max output range of the pressure sensor is 31 millivolts multiplied by our op-amp gain of 55, which means the typical max output range coming from the op-amp is 1.705 volts. Because the op-amp's output voltage stays within a specified range, only a small portion of a single-ended ADC will be used, but the differential ADC resolves this issue by focusing the ADC on the desired range. For the ADC, differential mode is selected as the input configuration. In the ADC, the output of the op-amp is fed into the positive channel. A fixed voltage reference provides the ADC with a reference voltage of 2.048 volts, which is high enough to account for the voltages from extreme sensor readings or sensor edge cases. The ADC captures data in burst average mode to remove some jitter. The pressure sensor reading is then calculated and converted to a percentage. For more information on these calculations, check out the data sheet for the pressure sensor and the GitHub for this demo that will be linked in the description below. The onboard USAR peripheral was set up in 9600 baud to display the percentage of the pressure that is being applied. The data can be visualized in graphical format, as you can see how the graph changes as the pressure varies. That's all for today. For more information on this application and more information on the differential ADC, please remember to check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more.